Brothers and sisters, you've probably been confronted with numerous situations in your life where you had to choose between two options, an easier one and a more difficult one with potential immediate consequences. Do I do this or not do it? Do I speak up or remain silent? Do I support what this person is doing or have the courage to oppose what they are doing? As Christians, we are taught to ask ourselves, what would Jesus say or do? The origin of this question goes back a long way, but in a sense, the whole question has been hijacked in our day and age by the world seeking to turn Christian teaching on its head. Instead of the world seeking to be conformed to the image and likeness of God, the world is now trying to conform God to the world's image and likeness. When you hear someone quoting a question like, what would Jesus say today? It is often to shut down debate or a criticism of particular actions, words or thoughts. The phrase today is more akin to, God is love, therefore Jesus pretty much accepts everything we do, think or say. Who are you then to question? So brothers and sisters, what has this all got to do with today's readings? Well, whenever I'm confronted by such statements on what God thinks about a particular action, word or thought, I generally say, have you read Matthew's Gospel? I say this because Matthew's Gospel in particular is filled with Jesus' tough love. While it seems that the world today only wants a Jesus who is sweet and accepting, who will rubber stamp their ways, in Matthew's Gospel, and in particular in today's Gospel reading, we see once again a Jesus who is not subject to either the world or its preconceptions on who God is and has the right to be. Encountering a pagan, Jesus doesn't mince words when speaking to her. But eventually through their discourse and a process of growth on her part, Jesus eventually grants her request. Let's break it down. In the first place, brothers and sisters, we see the Canaanite woman shouting out. Jesus ignores her. We can't command God to listen to us, even if our request is a good one. Then Jesus tells all present that he came for the lost sheep of Israel. That is, not for the pagans. But the Canaanite woman didn't give up. This time she humbled herself, falling on her knees before him. Lord, help me, she said. Her actions and her words are now a clear sign that she acknowledges Jesus' divinity and in effect was worshipping him as she was imploring his help. Then to our surprise, Jesus makes a comment which appears to be quite offensive. In effect, what he is saying is that she has no rights to claim what has been given by God to the house of Israel, that is, the chosen people of God. Instead of being offended, arcing up and walking off, as she's been compared to a dog, she remains humble and persistent. In her final response to Jesus, that even the house dogs eat the scraps that fall from the master's table, she is effectively bringing to light the fact that even the pagans are long descended from Adam and Eve, and so are part of God's original creation, and therefore have been given a promise of life and grace from the beginning. In response to her humility and sound understanding of the order of things, Jesus grants her request. It is important to note that he didn't just give it to her on demand. She had to go through a whole process of growth before Jesus granted her request. As we know, brothers and sisters, Jesus is no worldly pushover, a rubber stamp of sorts of all manner of modern evils. So many today just want the church to change all its teachings and to welcome all manner of sin as part of being a faithful Christian. But how can it be when God has made it clear through all the Old and New Testament that being incorporated into the people of God requires a change in our way of living our lives? For as we see in the first reading, God tells us he wants his house to be a house for all peoples. He wants them all to be saved. But listen very carefully to what the foreigner must do in order to be accepted into God's house. Foreigners who've attached themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love his name and be his servants. All who observe the Sabbath, not profaning it, and cling to my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain. My house will be called a house of prayer for all the peoples. Brothers and sisters, if Jesus were here today, I suspect that he would have a lot of tough words for the world, tougher than those he had for the Canaanite woman. But those tough words would not be his last words. For if the world would repent of its ways and, like the Canaanite woman, get down on its knees and beg for his grace and assistance, then God's anger would be turned to mercy and compassion, and all would turn out to the good. Let us pray for such an outcome.